Well, hello, Matt. This is Dave from ChiefTutor.com. You sent me in your plan and a picture of the house, which is great. So I have it pulled up here, and it's got the mansard roof, you know, where it cuts at two different angles. And you were saying that upstairs uh, the walls are 50 inches on the low side and 7 feet on the high side. Now, when I look at this upstairs, these typical sliders are about 80 inches tall, and it looks like we've got another at least a foot or more going to uh, the next seam for the paneling. So I'm not really sure where the floor height or ceiling height is, but if that was 7 and this was 50, I, I don't think it's 50 down here. Obviously, it didn't look like enough inches if it went all the way to the end wall. So it is hard to tell exactly where the roof are cutting it but the best way to do this is to do it manually now chief will let you do it um, automatically and you can set it up to do it that way you can go to your uh, build roof tool go into roof styles and there's a gam gamble roof and you can click on that and watch the latest details from the city or from sorry from chief architect on how to, do, how to do the gamble roof. Yeah, so there's mansard roofs and gamble roofs. Uh, you'd want to follow the steps for the gamble. Okay, so let's see here. Um, let's see what you got so far. So if I pump up your model, I can see it's like, wow, yeah, you're right. It's generated way too high. So let's do a few things first. Since you have all the roof planes in, let's go ahead and use the ones you've got. And we'll just correct them. And the best way to do that is use a cross-section elevation. So I'm going to stand in the living room and point towards the front door. And now I can see where the building is creating your roof. And the reason why Chief did that is because this is the second floor that you put on the building. And when you told Chief to build the second floor, it builds it right off the plate height of the second floor. Now you have the second floor at uh, 8 feet high, or 97 inches, or 96 inches roughly for 8 feet, um, into this section. So if it was 7 feet at 84 inches, that's typically what it should be. So that's where I'm going to start the process. I'm going to open my um, default settings. I'm going to double click on the floor tool, and it shows me only the first floor because I'm on the first floor. So I'm going to cancel out of that and I'm just going to go up to the second floor. Now my view doesn't really change because it doesn't know if you're on the first or second. So go back here, making sure you're on the second floor, double click this bad boy, and it shows me my first floor height is fixed and my second floor height I'm going to put in here is 84 inches. So that'll lower it down to the seven feet once I hit done. <clears throat> puts it back down okay so now I want to take these roofs and kind of match what you've drawn here so let's take a look at this a little closer we see it cutting through the first floor roof um, cuts through the walls here comes up to this point and turns and if we call that 50 and we call let's call this 7 because that makes more sense and this is just extra that's where we want to hit our target so we want to use some point-to-point -point dimension. Using the point-to-point -point dimension allows us to draw a dimension and fix it on a certain point. So I'm going to click OK. Come down here to the lowest point, and I'm going to just start right off the floor and drag up and let go. Then I'm going to select my point, click my dimension, and type in 50. Because <clears throat> you said it's 50 inches at the lowest part. And I'm going to use a CAD line to just kind of draw the line through the house to show that there's my 50 inch marker. Now let's do a seven foot marker, which we already have is basically the ceiling of the roof in that room. So this point where you have your crown molding is where it stops at the seven feet. So the first thing I want to do is fix these roofs then now that I know my points. So let's start with this upper one. I'll click on the first top upper one. And you can barely see it's highlighted. The line draws across there. Be careful not to touch the wall. You want to grab the roof. I can open it up and I can say, well, where do I need to send it to? Well, the first bit of information I could do is I could take a third dimension and start from the ground zero and come all the way up to the seven foot plate. So I want this to cut through my seven foot plate at 16.1. So I could double click this, I could lock the pitch, and I can type in here, I want it to be 16 foot 1 inch. Click OK, and it sends it down and shows you that that's where it's going to cut the roof plate there. So that's kind of like a starting point that we can do. Let's double click this and we'll see that 
uh, we can bring it down to that. But, you know, before I do that, I'm thinking maybe I'll raise this up just a little. Or, you know, it's going to be even better. Let's figure out a little bit more distance. Because right now, you have quite a bit of distance from here to the point where we think it's 50 inches breaking through the wall. So we wanted to start somewhere probably about here and then go up to there. So I'm going to go down to my floor plan view, go up to my second floor. And basically, I want to drag this guy down to where I think it should be, right about there. And I'm going to drag this piece down to about there. So I'm leaving a 7-foot marker for that one. And if I do the same here, I can just grab him and come right to 7 feet. And push that over as well. Go back to my elevation. We can start seeing things match up. Now, I know this needs to be a little higher. So I'm going to lock the pitch. I'm going to say, instead of 173, let's just call it 200 for now. So it puts it up to there. I'm going to double-click this. I'm going to lock my pitch and put that at 200 as well. And so that should line these two up. Now what I could do is double-click this guy and figure out the lowest point is 200. And my roof pitch is going down quite a bit. you got a 24. Let's just call it 20, a little bit less than that. And let's put in here 200 inches. Oh, actually, we're going to put in here 200 inches. Well, that's not going. 200 inches there. I had to type it in manually. At a 20 inch pitch. Let's just see what it does. So now it breaks it through and brings down, and it cuts it right there. So the wall actually is a little bit lower than 50 inches. So I know I need to extend it out a little further. So before I do that, I just want to fix both of these at the same. 220. I want to do the same here. I'm going to double click this guy. I'm going to make him 20 and make him 200. And hit OK. And it brings it down. So now I want to hit this point a little bit better where that is. So to do that, I'm just going to move my roof planes out. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to take this guy. And I'm just going to drag, I'm shift dragging both of them over. So I, I clicked on the first roof, I held down shift and clicked on the second roof, and I just moved it towards the outside. Go back to my elevation tool. And as I moved it out, it should have raised this wall a little higher. In fact, it did. See it right here. Actually, it was these two roofs that I was moving over. So now I see that it hits it actually right on the money. So now I'm going to move the other two over as well to match. In order to know what matches, I got 2.2 here. So I'm going to select this and select that roof. Select this roof and select that roof. And move it over. Since I don't know the 2.2, I I'd have to manually check it. One more inch. It looks like I'm going to be at that 2.2. There we go. Then I'm going to take the top roof and say hit number 2 on the keyboard to conjoin to that roof. And by doing that, I've connected the top and connected the two sides. I'm seven foot there, and I'm 50 inches where the wall is there. Now, if I take a look at my plan, I could start to see that the roof is modeling more accurately to what I'm after. So by manually manipulating the roof planes, I got them closer to what I think that you're saying you're after. Now, in most cases, in a room like this, it would be vaulted and there wouldn't be a ceiling, so it would go up to this top point. But the only thing that made me um, think about that is, again, what I thought was maybe wrong was, if I pull up the picture, I could see that, um, yeah, I think this is, this is 80 inches typically, and then all this extra... Is kind of like uh, above the seven foot plate that, that gets cut off up there. And then how much of this was cut down, they could have framed in the wall here as opposed to way down here because it'd be a lot less than 50. But that was the smart way to do it. Um, you did break out what it was, 50 inches and seven feet. So Matt, you, you did it perfectly in the sense that you measured the right spots. And manually manipulating this roof can get you to the you know, as close as possible, shall we say, for that accurate move. So hopefully you learned something new and enjoyed this video, and thanks for sending in your plan. And for all those who wish to get their plan fixed here at ChiefTutor.com, feel free to join our Prime membership and see if you qualify to get your plan fixed at ChiefTutor.com.